this. At 2 o'clock, we see gold do this run here. Rips lower. Remember, this is the low I told you it was going to go to. Did it go to it at 2 o'clock? It's a 15-minute candlestick, by the way. It drops down, but falls short of the objective, and then leaves this low and this low as relative equal lows. And then it rips up higher. What's happening here? What's occurring? It's setting the stage for traders that suspect that this is support. We can go long. It's going to rally. That's not what we want to see. Go into the, the expectation I teach you where the fair value gap or the imbalance, it drops, leaves this inefficiency right here. When it drops, it comes back up into it there to offer an opportunity to go short. And then it delivers where I said on the 13th, which is that relative equal lows on the daily chart. It digs into it here. Lower, lower, one more good time, and then rips higher today. All of this price action in here, I, I, I'm telling you, I would not be in any of that. Not in it at all. Um, if I was looking at gold real time, I would have told you that it's possibly going to go here, but I wouldn't touch it. And that's the honest God truth. Ask any of my long-term students. I say this all the time about gold. I don't know what it is, this fascination with trading gold. But there are better markets to trade than this bullshit. But that two stage or second stage of delivery after 2.30. See, the first move is like a, a red herring. Hey, pay attention over here. Look at all this. Okay. And then at 2.30, that's the real move. That's the real one. Okay. So it can, it can come in two forms. It can go rally up. Suck everybody in thinking it's going to go lower. And then it wipes them completely out and goes lower a lot. Or it can drop lower, get everybody thinking at 2 o'clock that it's going lower. And then at 2.30, it rips and takes out the high that was formed prior to the drop. Okay, That's the buy or sell in that way. The other thing is where it drops down a lot, leaves a fair value gap. And at 2.30, it'll go back to the fair value gap. And then the real run comes. Most times... Most times it does not do this. Usually it creates a run, one direction, and that direction is a complete Judas swing where it runs, creates a high, it doesn't come back to that high and just makes a lower low in the day. Yes. Two o'clock. <clears throat> I know I, I've got people sending me messages saying that the title's wrong. <laughs> I know it, it'll be changed. It, the, I mislabeled my notes Friday and everything since then. I mentioned it earlier in the recording. But the uh, two o'clock is the initial leg of FOMC. We dropped, rallied higher, fair value gap, drops down rips up higher and then one more time drops lower if you look at the first move going into two o'clock what is the first move it's dropping down so it's setting what what's the expectation what's retail going to think it's going to keep doing lower this fair value gap is utilized twice two times trades into here, rallies, they dig into it again today, one more time, and then they send it higher. On NQ, this will be much more impactful because I actually executed on it. Here's all I say. <laughs> Alright, so we have ES, um, we started where I showed ES, so this is the NQ, and I want to take everything off this strip it down to nothing all right so here we have nq nasdaq delivery contract month is september 2023 
inside this drop, okay, think about what I've talked about here. Think about what I've been talking about for weeks in relationship to ES, E-mini S&P, and the NASDAQ futures contract. Which of those two has been the leadership on the upside? Which one has the strongest price delivery for being bullish? NQ, NASDAQ. So if we consider trading FOMC, doesn't it make more sense if we want to go long? Why would we want to go long? What was the move that took place on the drop down into 2 o'clock? It's dropping at 2 o'clock. So here's your fake move. So this drop down here, and then they hold it here. Holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it. And at 2.30, the macro begins. So when you're trading FOMC, if you're not writing this down, you're completely wasting your time. You have to know which of the indices that you're going to trade because of relative strength. Which one's stronger? There's always going to be a leadership issue, whether it be NASDAQ or ES, uh, Dow. Okay, um, If it's Dow, I just go to ES. If it's NASDAQ, I will trade NASDAQ over ES. If it's anything leading to the weaker or the stronger for the Dow, I always elect to use the ES as a, a deferment. <clears throat> I defer myself to trading only ES, not the, uh, the Dow. So if it's a matter of picking which indice I'm trading, it's either a decision of whether trading the NASDAQ and it has to be the leadership on the upside. That means it's been going up longer, harder, faster than ES. If ES is going up longer, harder, faster than NASDAQ, if it was reversed in its role, I would have taken this trade in ES and not NASDAQ. So the first delivery at 2 o'clock was seeing price do what? Drop down. I'm going to go into a five-minute chart. When this market dropped here, what was the where was the uh, most energetic price leg beginning from? Here, at this big move here. I'm not saying that you can't see this one as a high or this as a high or this as a high, but this is the most energetic. So all of this starts the run going into FOMC. So anyone that's in this move, where's their stop loss? right above that short-term high. I'm aware, but remember, I'm listening to this guy tell me how to run my pool, and I'm not really paying attention to him, and I'm trying to get an example on FOMC, and I'm doing it with my phone, which is what you see on my Twitter feed, okay? Tools playing in the background. <laughs> it's what it is, okay? So I think it's going to go up here, but I can't pretend to be listening to this guy and watch all this <clears throat> watch all this stuff happen as it's going on so i picked a very easy target low hanging fruit objective which is going to be the buy stops resting above this short term high what why was i going long in here what was i looking at this move here i'm sorry this move good grief this uh down close candle here all of this movement in here back and forth, I'm treating that as like a very small little bounce price range. It's doing back and forth, back and forth. So I'm trusting that there shouldn't be any more meaningful run below that if we take out that candle's high. We have it here. So we take it out high. That low now becomes, that's it. There's no more need for any more risk going lower. The, the stage is set because what time is it? 2.25. The first stage of that delivery in the strongest of all the indices, which is the NASDAQ. I'm not looking at or caring about ES. I'm not looking or caring about the, the Dow. I'm not looking at relationships between the SMT. I don't care about that. It's time. The macro will run on time. It's going to favor this market because it's been outperforming on the upside. So it's 
its sponsorship is heavily on this one going up versus the ES, like it's been doing for weeks. And the Dow has already proven it's lethargic. It's not interested in performing like the ES and or not even close to the NASDAQ. So all focus would be on NASDAQ. So buying, going long, right here, what am I keying off of? Look at the arrow where I entered and what I've already told you. This body of this candle, the last down close candle, I'm using it as Bella, by the way. This movement down into here, I'm buying that right there. Right there. Bought that. Then I'm using this right here, this opening price. And inside this little area here, I want to use that as a means of wanting to go long on a pyramid. So I went along with five contracts, which is not a lot. And I added another one, which is I'm, I'm pillaring. What am I aiming for here? Just before we get to this high, because during FOMC, it could do this wild whipsaw still and then deliver up. I want to get in, or I'm sorry, I want to get out of my trade as it approaches this high, low hanging fruit. I don't need it to go to the high or higher to get a fill. There's my exit on this candle here. All of this rundown is completely wiped out ultimately taking out that high here over here two stages non-farm payroll is the same way it either gives you a drop come back to a fair value gap and continue or it gives you a drop and completely reverse and rip higher everything reversed the difference in knowing which one it is is how it trades at the time which is why I have to wait. I have to see what it's doing, how it delivers, and compare it to the other averages. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that relationship between the other. It's not SMT. I'm looking at how who's been leading the pack, higher or lower, whenever these reports come out. And then I'm looking for where the liquidity is. Traders that were trying to chase this, they're trapped down here. They're hoping it's going to go lower. Back up it goes. Go back and look at your calendar. And every time there was a FOMC rate announcement and non-farm payroll, study how that liquidity is taken. Study that. It's always a two-stage macro. It always does something initially that gets people thinking it's going to do something specific. And then it rips their face off. CPI is that macro on steroids, on crack, on meth. <laughs> okay, it's it's literally like cocaine up the same macro, and you can't trade that. You can't. Okay, you can't. So all of these high impact news drivers and or medium impact news drivers, if you're afraid of those, just wait thirty minutes. Minimum, make, wait 30 minutes after they form and then see what liquidity res resides in the marketplace still and any inefficiency. And if it offers you a range that presents potential to see 10 handles, then you probably have a good chance of making five out of it or maybe even more. So it's a, there's a lot of waiting around to see what happens on these big in, impact news drivers. Because you don't know, and I don't know, before it happens, how they're going to use that information to manipulate it. Because they want people chasing this idea at the moment. And they know that brokers are pulling liquidity. Not that there is an absence of trading or interest. It just means that all the brokers are collectively saying, the hell with this. We are not getting caught on the wrong side. Because if they get a client or a large base of their clients that are over leveraging and everybody predominantly over leverages, you know, you do it too. What happens if they're right on a big move day? The brokers are out. They're not trying to do that. So wait, wait for that initial shock and trust the fact that you don't need that first move to make money. You don't need it. 
wait for the the first move in two o'clock in FOMC. And in 225, 230, then it's gonna rip the other direction. That's that's what it is. That's what, exactly what happens. It's kind of like uh, well, I don't want to say it in the live stream because I'm like my channel might get flagged, but it, I've said the analogy before on Twitter and stuff, and I'll talk about it this weekend in a, in a, a shotgun Saturday. I'm sure you're all wondering what it is. It's not a big deal. It's just it's an analogy I use that has something to do with uh, making individuals run to a specific area and then attacking that once they get there for a larger impactful you know event. That's that's what I mean by two stage. So it's designed to corral traders into one big area, make them think it's going to do a specific thing. So that way there is a pool of liquidity that's being sacrificed. And then that liquidity is being used for a counterparty. So it's tricking traders to go in the wrong direction and then raking them across the coals the other direction. So 